All right, man, peace. So, brothers, I recently did an aftermath video for the Anthony Joshua versus Andy Ruiz heavyweight championship match in which, as most of you know who follow boxing, Anthony Joshua was knocked out in the seventh round. And I stated that even though it was going to be a very traumatic event for him to overcome, it was going to be the best part of his life because going through that trial, that tribulation, that adversity was going to make him a more mature and stronger person assuming that he's able to move past the psychological trauma as well as the physical trauma that he was put through over the course of that bout. And I want to make a follow-up video to that sentiment and of course start a new series called The Bad Times Are a Good Thing Volume 1. And of course this will be featuring Mr. Tyson Fury who's going to testify to many of the sentiments that I first addressed in that aftermath video. And it's a very important thing especially for a lot of you brothers out there particularly for a lot of you younger so-called black men 17, 18, 19 years old who are just starting to live life. You are going to hit bad times, rough patches. I guarantee you that. There are going to be situations that you're forced to endure where, quite frankly, you might not be sure if you're going to make it. it. Might be a life or death situation. So, of course, we also have to make sure that we're cognizant of our decision-making protocols. But that's a whole other topic for another video. The point being is this. Should you reach those moments when you're going through adversity and rough times, you have to stay the course. And that's why it's so important to be goal-oriented. None of us are perfect, not me, not you, not anyone else. We're all going to hit rough patches. But we have to make sure that we understand, number one, who we're surrounding ourselves with, and number two, what it is that we did to put ourselves into those bad situations. Because if you don't have accountability, eventually you're going to fall and not be able to get back up. So anyway, they're going to talk about it, and I'm going to chime in. I thought you just brought something up. I thought that you were done. You had you talked about spiraling into depression, drug abuse. Yeah. You were obese. It's not yeah. just that you beat Klitschko, and but then you went through that before you came back to yeah. get off the deck against Deontay Wilder. How do you now find yourself in the position you're in? How? He believed in himself, and of course Tyson Fury is going to answer. But brothers, it's very important that you always believe in yourself. Never ever doubt yourself. No matter what it is that you're going through, but we also have to love ourselves. A lot of cats out there, they're taking drugs, they're surrounding themselves with the wrong people. You're joining gangs, you're selling drugs to your own people. Of course, that's going to affect how you view yourself. So that's why I make videos on this topic. Once again, brothers, all of us have gone through things that we regret, that we wish we could have a do-over on. But as long as you can learn something from it, that's what really matters. And I promise you, a lot of the guys who are around you right now, who you think are your buddies or your friends, you and that so-called friend or comrade, your homeboy, you are going to diverge at some point, more likely than not, especially if your life paths are different. Say, for example, if you're more mature than your so-called friend or your homeboy, there is going to be an impasse that the two of you reach where you're going to be forced to go right and he's going to be forced to go left and you're never going to meet again. And that's part of the maturation process of life. But... You always have to be aware of why someone is around you because everyone is around you for a reason. If a woman is around you, there's a reason for it. If a man is around you, there's a reason for it. Sometimes it's an upright thing or it's something that's pure. Maybe they just want a friend or someone to confide in. Or maybe they're using you for your money or for your looks or for sex or for access to something else. But you have to know why people are around you. Just because someone wants you just for sex or money does not mean that they're necessarily a bad person. But you have to be aware of what that person wants you for or what you want that person for. Because if not, you're going to be used for your entire life and you can't have that. And that will have a deleterious effect on your self-image. And your self-image has a direct correlation with your self-esteem. Your self-esteem has a direct correlation with your self-confidence. And your self-confidence is going to have a direct correlation with how much you're able to optimize your life. And we only have a finite amount of time on this earth. You know, it's been a lot of hard work and dedication, and I believe every step I ever took and every left and right turn I ever made was all meant to be. I agree, sir. I believe I had to go through all those dark times to be able to appreciate good times. I agree. Appreciate small things in life, because I took a lot of things for granted in my life, Air Max. Everything I ever touched turned to gold, and... And there was a point in my life where I never appreciated nothing. Nothing meant anything to me because everything came so easy to me. But now I appreciate that glass of water because there was a long period of time where the only place I ever thought I'd ever end up was in a padded room. And I didn't think I'd ever come back to competitive boxing. I didn't think I'd ever lose the weight. 
Let me say this very quickly as Tyson Fury is giving his own life testimony. There's going to be times, and it might sound crazy, when you're at the tipping point of going over the edge. And if, you're, if you don't have mental wherewithal, certain voices or demons or spirits are going to make suggestions to you. That is going to happen. So you have to be strong enough to weather that. That's why it's so important to know who you are and what direction you want your life to go into. Because when you hit those pivotal moments in your life, people who you never thought would turn against you or who you swore were down for you, especially once again, you guys who are 16, 17 years old, they're going to act like they didn't know you. And that's going to be the, the true litmus test for your own character is how well you function on your own as a solitary individual, not how you function as a member of a pack. It, it was the hardest thing I ever had to do, but as something I'd suffered with my whole life, depression and anxiety, never really understood it until 2016 to really start doing proper research on the matter. I just thought that it was something that I was suffering with or feeling. I couldn't put into words how I was feeling at that time, and I was just keeping away from everybody else until I exploded and I needed help. Or imploded. He doesn't talk about it. He'll even get a little ornery if you bring it up. But there have been reports so then why would you bring it up? If you know that he's going to get ornery for you bringing something up, why would you therefore bring it up? That, Tyson, you donated your entire purse, I think it was from the Wilder fight, to uh, people who needed it, essentially. Well, the thing is, what I do in my personal life is not what I want to portray over as, as a professional because I'm not some do-gooder who's looking for a pat on the back off the public to say, oh, Tyson's a nice bloke, let's give him a pat on the back. Because you realize that, to be quite frank with you, and a lot of people probably not going to like this, but most people ain't shit. So when you do good things, you have to do good things for a higher reason than the acceptance of people. Because most people ain't shit. They're going to find a way to turn whatever positive you do into a negative anyway. Of course, there are splendid people <laughs> that you're going to come across in life. But the average person is fair to Midland and on the downward path from there. So whatever good you do, you have to do for a higher purpose for the acceptance and approval of a higher power, not people, because people will turn on you so fast, you won't even know what the hell happened. You know, what I do in my life behind closed doors, that's up to me. You know, I, I never publicize stuff like that. Couldn't that be an inspiration to others? You made it all the way no, back and then gave of yourself? Yeah, but it's, it's not about that for me. What I do to help others is, is just between me and them. Good for you, sir. Don't brag about it, and I don't, like I said, I'm not some do-gooder who needs the pat on the back for, doing, for helping someone who's in it. In other words, you're self-validated. That's what manhood is. Brothers, if you spend your whole life, and this is for all of us, if you spend your whole life looking for people to commend you, the next thing you know, you're going to wake up and you will have put shackles on yourself. They will not have even have had to put shackles on you. You would have put shackles on yourself. When you give people the power to compliment you and bring you up, you also are giving them the power to tear you down. That's why you have cats out here like Kevin Durant who lose his mind whenever somebody says anything about him. He has to respond and react. That makes him very predictable. That makes it very easy for him to be manipulated by others. And certain people have nefarious motivations. Some people have benign motivations. But most people who are trying to manipulate you is for a nefarious purpose or reason. It's a position that I am because I feel this way because I know what it's like because I've been in that position. Mm. And, um, you know, when you're on top of the world, everybody wants to be your friend. And every Absolutely. To give you stuff for free, and everybody wants to be around you. But you know when I was down, dark, and depressed, and out of everything, and I was on the verge of suicide? Where are all those people then? When you needed them most, when I needed those people most, when I needed that positivity around me, they were all gone. That's because the, the concept of the fan is based on the amount of energy that they siphon from you. And that's why I always tell you, brothers, being a fanboy is not mentally or spiritually healthy. Because what you're doing is you're setting up someone as an idol. And the energy that they're creating within themselves and emanating, you're feeding off of like a drug. And you therefore become a cult member. That's why you take things personally when someone says something about your idol. Because you're feeding off of the energy that they create like a drug addict does. And as soon as that person is no longer relevant or around or falls from grace... That basically is your rehab, and you kick that drug addiction cold turkey. 
And that basically is what Tyson Fury is alluding to. When he was up, he had all these so-called congregants in, in the church of Tyson Fury. But when he was cast down like an icon torn off a wall and thrown on the floor and smashed, all his congregation fled. Like the scriptures say, if you smite the shepherd, the sheep shall be scattered. So that's what he's noting. He's noting how phony the people were. But it's not a people problem. It was a him problem because he believed it. You're never supposed to believe what people say about you, especially when they're speaking in idolatrous tones. They're not in their right mind. And eventually they're going to snap back into some level of pseudo reality. And you're going to believe that they turned against you. And it's not so much that it's just that they no longer are willing to siphon your energy because it's not as powerful as it once was. So that's why it's important to remain balanced, man. People are going to come at you, especially if you, at if you attain a level of prominence in some way because of your talents or your gifts. They're going to tell you how great you are, how wonderful you are, this and that. Like Tupac said in one of those biographical films, he was going to the club and back before he was famous, he couldn't get a dance, he couldn't get anything. But as soon as he had a hit record, all of a sudden he was so sexy and things of that nature. It's because of the entrancement and the enchantment that you know he had the power of and that eventually he was able to master this was known as the cult of personality but what you'll find is that most of these idols in hollywood whether it's in the sports world or the entertainment industry singers dancers rappers even politicians when they fall from grace they have to turn to drugs because they have to replace that adoration with something else body left an abandoned ship only the real people, like close family and close friends, you see who the real people are in life when you come to that position, it, God forbid you ever do. Absolutely. Good job, sir. So now that you're here, and you're obviously on top of the world, and you're in a position, you, you're three-headed monster in the heavyweight division, you, Wilder, and Anthony Joshua, what are you hoping for, first and foremost? I mean, is it Wilder? Is it Joshua? The question is, what is my motivation? Yes, okay, fair enough. There we go. Fair enough, no problem. My motivation is, right. is to be the best in my era. You know, it's not about who can create the most diverse opinions or whatever. Mm -hmm. This is about who goes down as the best of this era. You know, I already got a head start in the guys when I took the lineal championship off Vladimir. Um, you know, I've already stepped up and fought Deontay Wilder. Mm -hmm. I think all of us need to fight more than one time apiece. You know, go back to the days of... Uh, Joe Frazier, Muhammad Ali, George Trilogies. Foreman, Kenny yeah. Orton, all these great fights they had, they fought each other time and time again. And it's just like, today everyone's afraid of losing, they don't want to step up to the plate because, oh, he said, she said, I might be better, I deserve a few more dollars or whatever. Well, one of the reasons why a lot of fighters are hesitant to make the big fights today is because the networks want to cash you down if you lose one fight. And that's one of the offshoots of the Floyd Mayweather era. He was able to build himself up based on the understanding that due to his impeccable record he was the best fighter of his era now we know there were other reasons why he was the best fighter of his era at least from my perspective i understand that but he latched a lot of his persona and the cult of personality worship that he was initiating to his record and the networks also grasped onto that so now it was very difficult for other fighters to follow behind floyd and create a new paradigm of success in the boxing world, they're gonna have to shatter that notion that you have to be undefeated in order to be a cash cow. But that's gonna be very difficult to do. Very difficult to do. Especially when there's so much money on the line. You have various networks with different champions now. So everyone's trying to fight to see who's gonna be the A side or the B side. And a lot of what that is going to entail is maintaining an unbeaten record. Well, as a fighting man and as a world champion, I would encourage these men to step up and fight each other. Incidentally, Top Rank made a bunch of those fights, his current promoter. That's well, correct, well, Top Rank does. Top Rank made most of those fights back in the 60s and 70s when the business paradigm of the boxing world was completely different. Bob Arum basically had a monopoly until Don King stepped in. So that's a non equivalency. Hell of a job. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. And this time around, you'll get to appreciate it and be in the moment and continue to pay it forward. God bless. Thank you for sharing Thank your you story. I Thank appreciate you. that. As it may be, Bob Aaron is actually one of my favorite people. I love Bob. Yeah, good people. Uh, I love you too, Stephen A. You're my favorite Schwarzer. All right, the Warriors are... 
But anyway, that's basically it on that, brothers. Once again, always remember that going through the bad times is a good thing. Because you can't create a diamond without pressure, time, and intense heat. Peace.